up. So I promised you a video on Linux file permissions like a month ago at this point. Um, it's finally here. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that by the end of this video, you'll have a working understanding of file permissions. So you can confidently on your own system as needed, work with file permissions, modify them, view and understand them whenever the need comes up, since occasionally it does. All right, so this is what I'm gonna go over. I will put timestamps in the description for each of these, but here's an overview. To start with, uh, the definition of file permissions on Linux, since I think we should probably start with, you know, a clear base of what we're working with, right? Um, file permissions on Linux is a system of rules that's going to determine uh, access for read, write, and execute on any file or directory. And that's actually gonna get determined three different times in, in three sets, basically. You've got your file owner, and they're going to have a read, write, or execute toggle on and off for each. Same thing for the group that that owner is in, and same thing for all other users. And if I show you uh, my example file here that I created, um, aptly named file, of course, um, we've got permissions, and you'll see there's nine permissions, right? There's read and write that's toggled on for my current file owner, aka user bread here. Um, we've got read permission for the group that that owner is in, and then we've got read permission for all other users. So any other potential user on my system can only read this file, they can't write to it or execute it. And just to clarify, um, read versus write versus execute, it's probably mostly self-explanatory, um, but reading a file is just, you know, for example, catting out the file or using ls on a directory, that's reading. Writing would be modifying it in your text editor um, or modifying it in some other way. And then executing is just executing, for example, a shell script or a program, it's running the program. So that's read versus write versus execute. And the basic permissions we have here, this dot at the beginning is just saying this is a, a normal file. It's not anything special. It's not a directory. It's not, you know, it's just a normal file. Okay, so that's the basic set of permissions, and anytime you look at a file's permissions, you'll have essentially these 10 characters. So, and of course they can change, you know, if you give execute access, you'll have like an X here, etc. You get the idea. All right, so why do permissions actually exist? Why do they need to exist? I think this is kind of a fundamental thing that's worth, you know, clearing up at the beginning of the video before we get, you know, into the weeds with everything else. Permissions exist for two main reasons, and every other reason is kind of subsequent to those reasons. And those reasons are security and find control. And I have an example to use to illustrate this, and the example being why you don't run applications as root, because this is essentially for a parallel reason for why permissions exist in the first place. And even if you're really new to Linux and you haven't been using it for a while yet, you've probably heard, you know, you don't run an application as root, you don't run it as sudo, you don't give it administrator access when you don't need to. And that's for a really important principle that even if you have like no Linux knowledge, you could probably imagine why you wouldn't want to give something administrator access at random. Um, because if you have, you know, an application that either has a bug in it that could break your system or worst case scenario, obviously really rare, but worst case scenario, an application somehow had malware in it or, you know, lines of code that were going to like modify your system files or modify your Etsy slash password. Um, not saying that to scare you, that's very rare, but you don't want to, as a precaution, you don't want to run things as administrator without needing to. And that's just the principle of least privilege. You don't want to give something administrator or higher access when it doesn't need to have it. And the same principle applies there to stability, right? If something has a bug in it and it doesn't actually have access to execute whatever that bug would pertain to, well, then it's a lot more stable. Now, the other side of this is also fine control. Um, permissions will give you fine control in multi-user environments. So for example, I have one user that has a file they made, and then I have another user that shouldn't be able to read or write to that first person's file, vice versa, right? Probably makes sense. All right, so that is why permissions exist. Let's talk about how you can modify permissions, since obviously at sometimes you need to modify a permission to do something here or there. Um, for example, executing a shell script, you might have heard of chmod plus x. You'll add that to your shell script and that's gonna make it executable. So if I wanted to add that to file here and then I list out again, you'll see x was now added both for the owner, the group, and for all other users. And that is one of the syntaxes for the chmod command. 
Um, there's a few things you can do with it. Um, the man page is helpful as well if you want to read more on it, as well as the arch wiki. But just to give you a couple examples, um, you've got uh, essentially four different things here. Um, U, which is going to correspond to the owner of the file. G is going to correspond to the group. O is going to correspond to all other users. And then A is going to be all of the above. For each of those, you can then use an equals, a plus, or a minus, and that's going to set what you give it. So for example, um, on this file here, if I did chmod g equals rwx, that's gonna give read, write, and execute to the owner's group there. So um, if I do that on file, list it out again, you'll see we've now got read, write, and execute. Um, I could actually do chmod a equals rwx file. Um, that's now going to give all permissions to everybody. I could do chmod um, a minus w file. That's going to give a uh, remove write permission from everybody there. You get the idea. There's another thing that you'll see, uh, which is octal permissions. Um, octal permissions, if I actually list this out on, let's just do a directory for the sake of it. Um, you've got these three numbers, you've got a fourth number. I'm gonna get to the fourth number in a second, but let's talk about these three numbers. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize this. Um, you'll probably encounter them and start to remember what they are at some point, especially if you're working with Linux a lot. Um, but you don't need to memorize them. It's just worth knowing, yes, they exist. So octal permissions is basically a shortcut for the chmod command. Each of these numbers is going to correspond to this whole string above. When we've got this whole string here, this corresponds to a number. So that way it's a lot easier if you know exactly what string and permissions you're gonna want. You can just do chmod and then you give it a number. So for example, 777 is just gonna be all permissions. If I do that on my file again, list it out, you'll see, okay, now we've got all permissions on that file, right? And those numbers are actually determined. Um, there's a whole system to determine them. I think it's pretty cool, but I'm not even gonna attempt to try to explain it in the video. The ArchWiki does a great job explaining it if you wanna go read up on how it works. I, I think it's cool. It has to do with, you know, base eight and converting to it, that sort of thing. You can go read it if you want to. Um, but anyways, just to tell you some of the common numbers you'll see, um, 777 is going to give everything read, write, X, uh, execute there. Um, 644 is just gonna be like a normal file. So most files like in your home directory, for example, are gonna have 644. 755 is executable, but like I said, don't worry about trying to memorize these. You might become familiar with them um, as you work with files and permissions, but don't worry about memorizing them. You can always just use the basic chmod syntax of u equals, you know, rwx or whatever else. All right, so these standard Linux directory permissions, um, each of your uh, file system directories that um, I actually made a whole video about directories, so I won't you know dwell on it too much, but essentially um, if I you know list out uh, some, I don't know, let's do my root directory here, right? You'll see, okay, 0750 is the octal permission there. Um, if I list out, uh, I don't know, my home bread there, you'll see, okay, 0700, those are the permissions there. Um, you'll have different permissions on each of your base file system directories, um, but the first digit here that you're seeing, the before the 777 or the 750, etc., the first di digit you're seeing is uh, for a special mode. You have a few different special modes. You don't need to memorize them or anything like that. Don't worry. Um, but essentially, just to give you an idea of what exists, um, for example, you've got a special mode called Sticky Bit um, that applies to the temp directory there. Um, what that's going to do is that's just going to say um, owners can only delete their files and they can't delete somebody else's files. So somebody else can't delete uh, your particular file in the temp directory. You've got a couple other special modes that will do other things for you. Um, for example, uh, set GID, set UID. Um, you can get into that if you have a reason to, but just for general use, you probably aren't going to need to worry about it too much. Um, but a few other things that are worth just knowing that they exist, so that way if you encounter them, you'll know what man page to read or what to look up. I wanted to clarify, um, file attributes, which you might have heard of before, File attributes, permissions are one of the various file attributes. Um, you've got a lot of different file attributes, for example, size of the file, um, owner and group that that owner is in of the file, um, date last accessed, uh, blocks that that file is occupying in your system, a few other things, but file permission is one of those standard attributes. So that's sort of what it falls under. Um, and you also have extended attributes, which is essentially just extra metadata notes on your files. Um, um, this, I guess, isn't directly related to file permissions, but I just wanted to clarify, you also have extended attributes. Um, 
I did want to mention permission inheritance. If you're familiar with permission inheritance on Windows, it is not quite the same on Linux and it's really not the same at all. Um, but you can work with permission inheritance uh, with access control lists, uh, which is actually POSIX compliant. You can use the set FACL command and that's gonna let you work with um, access control lists, which essentially is going to allow you to deal with permission inheritance. So for example, I have a directory and I want uh, every subdirectory, every file in it to inherit permissions from the above directory. That's what access control lists are for. You can work with that if you need to, but for an end user sense, you're probably not gonna need to work with it a lot. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically it. Hopefully you have a good understanding of file permissions. Uh, see you next time. Peace.